Hi, okay, so section two of key area two is on male hormones. So there are three male hormones that you need to know. You need to know where they're produced, what they do, and then a little bit about how their number, the, the concentration of them is controlled inside the bloodstream. Okay, so in terms of the hormonal control of fertility, uh, the reproductive hormones after puberty will control the production of the sperm and the ova. And the body has some systems in place to basically ensure that this doesn't happen too much or too little. So there's never an overproduction or also an underproduction of these gametes of your sperm and your ova. OK, so there are three hormones involved in the male reproductive system. These control the production of sperm. So we're focusing on male reproductive hormones here. The first one is FSH. Now, that stands for follicle stimulating hormone, but you never have to name them. The letters are enough. There is also a broad rule. If its name is a bunch of letters, it's made by the pituitary gland. OK, so if it's FSH, I instantly know that's a bunch of letters, pituitary gland, ICSH, interstitial cell stimulating hormone is again, I know instantly that's a bunch of letters made in the pituitary gland, testosterone, that's a proper name, not made in the pituitary gland. OK, so that's a broad rule that we need to follow. So what we're about to look at is where are they made and what do they do for these three hormones? It is useful to know what the letters stand for because they actually tell you the job that they do. Mm -hmm. So there's no harm in learning them. You're not going to get marked down for no, for using them and knowing them. But um, in terms of SA, FSH, obviously produced in the pituitary gland, the pituitary gland then secretes the FSH to the testes. So like we said, hormones quite often made in one place act in another. So it's made in the pituitary, it acts in the testes. And FSH acts on the seminiferous tubules, which promote sperm production. OK, so that's its job. That's all you need to know about FSH. ICSH, again, produced in the pituitary gland, travels through the blood to the testes. And then what they do is they bind to receptors on the outside of interstitial cells. And then that causes the interstitial cells to make testosterone. OK, so an important job still not directly related to sperm production. But the fact is they bind to those interstitial cells, remembering on the outside of the seminiferous tubules and they cause them to produce testosterone. Testosterone, that final one, testosterone, um, is once it's produced, is released into the bloodstream and it will act on various different locations, um, which it gets through through travelling through the bloodstream because it's a hormone and that's how hormones travel. Testosterone will act on the seminiferous tubules to um, encourage them to produce sperm. That is one of its main jobs, although testosterone does have some other roles in the body, um, but that is the big one in terms of producing the gametes of sperm is acting on the seminiferous tubules. OK, now that's essentially it. We just looked at where they are produced and what they do. Now we're looking at the idea of, well, how do you make sure you don't have too much testosterone, too much ICSH, too much FSH, resulting in too much sperm? So the way this happens is high levels of testosterone can inhibit the production of FSH and ICSH in the pituitary. So remember on the previous slide how we had the idea of testosterone released into the bloodstream. That includes there's blood flowing through your brain if you're male as well. OK, and the idea is testosterone can bind to receptors on the pituitary gland and prevent production of ICSH and FSH. OK, so the idea is high levels of testosterone are going to prevent production of both of those hormones, including the same hormone that causes testosterone production. Okay, so as FSH and ICSH, those two hormones are no longer being produced, that means that the sperm production and the testosterone production is then also reduced. It's kind of like a, a nice wee knock on cycle. No FSH, no ICSH means that no sperm is being produced, no test testosterone is produced <coughs> in this cycle. <coughs> well, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, obviously, as the testosterone level drops, that means it's no longer going to be inhibiting the production of these things because testosterone is the thing that's going back to the pituitary and inhibiting. So if testosterone levels have gone down, there's no longer going to be that inhibition occurring, which means that this cycle can start again and FSH and ICSH can rise again. So more sperm can be produced, testosterone can rise again and it continues like a nice little circle. OK, so this graph effectively shows that effect happening. So the idea is it shows the pattern of testosterone levels in the average male's blood over a period of time. And what it means is it's kind of like thermostatic control. If you know how a thermostat works, the idea is if the temperature gets slightly too high, the temperature 
uh, producing thing will switch off until it gets too cold and then it will turn on. It's kind of like that. So if we start at the start of the graph, we've got testosterone production occurring until it gets to a high level. But when testosterone levels get really high, that inhibits FSH and ICSH production. Now, because ICSH is now inhibited, testosterone isn't being made by the interstitial cells. So testosterone levels start to drop as we look from about hours 9 to 18 or so. So testosterone levels start to decrease because testosterone is blocking ICSH release. As testosterone drops, the inhibition uh, starts to end. And the idea is testosterone levels can then start increasing again. Explaining this is hard. I am struggling a little bit here. I understand what's going on inside of this, but the idea is testosterone is controlling its own levels. Okay, It's basically going back to the pituitary and either saying there's enough testosterone, stop producing ICSH, or it goes away from there and it says there's not enough testosterone, so ICSH is made. Okay, And we're going to ignore what's behind Okay, so to summarise again, we've talked about the three hormones, FSH, ICSH and testosterone. FSH, it's produced in the pituitary gland, and what it does is that it stimulates sperm production in the seminiferous tubules. ICSH, also made of letters, so it's produced in the pituitary gland, stimulates the interstitial cells to make testosterone. Okay. And finally, testosterone, which is produced in the interstitial cells, so it's the one produced somewhere else, it stimulates sperm production in the seminiferous tubules, but it also can inhibit the production of FSH and ICSH, which in turn inhibits the production of itself. OK, so essentially, if you memorize everything on this little slide, you should be fine. Um, so easy enough, hopefully. We're next going to cover the female hormones in section three.